David here with Vic Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. Today I have a pen for you from Pilot, but I'm betting it's one you haven't seen previously. And you'll only find this pen on one specific website, which isn't associated with fountain pens or stationery. It can be found at a website called Pokemon Center, and that would be because this pen is Pokemon themed. What I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of this uniquely themed pen, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for about it, show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to a viewer by the name of Jens who actually lent this pen for review. Well, actually Jens is located in Europe and the Pokemon Central website only ships to the US. So Jens had the pen sent to me for review and then I will be sending it along to him. Uh, and no, this does not mean that I will be your pen mule to ship things around the globe for you. So please do not ask. This was a one-time thing. Uh, there are three pens in this limited edition series, each dedicated to a specific Pokemon. Uh, these are not the best pictures, but they were the only ones available. There is a Pikachu, then a Charizard, and finally a Rayquaza. The pen arrives in this box, branded with the Pokemon Center. Uh, and then on the real box, uh, there is a silhouette of the monster depicted on this box. Uh, inside here we have another box and a few other things. Uh, there is a nice polishing cloth, uh, which doesn't state it anywhere, but this might be an anti-tarnishing uh, cloth. You can see it has that inner white layer there. Um, if it is, it's useful because the pen is made from sterling silver. Um, there is also a certificate of authenticity and a use and care guide. Um, each of these are branded with the Pokemon Center uh, branding, so these aren't just the generic documentation that gets added to the majority of Pilot pens. So that's nice when things are customized a bit more like that. Um, we also have three Pilot branded cartridges. And then inside this box here, we have the pen. This is the Pilot Pokemon Charizard. Uh, this pen is based on the Pilot Silvern model, which has been around for quite some time. Uh, the pen is made from sterling silver. Uh, if you are not familiar with Pokemon, it is a Japanese franchise which consists of things like video games, animated series, films, and a trading card game, uh, as well as other media. Uh, Pokemon takes place in a universe where humans coexist with creatures known as Pokemon, uh, which is a combination of the words uh, pocket and monster. If I tried explaining everything about Pokemon, this would be a very long video, but the essence is that you play as a Pokemon trainer, you explore the world and collect Pokemon. Uh, between all of the games, uh, there are over a thousand different Pokemon species. Uh, you train your Pokemon and fight them against those from other trainers. Uh, there is a lot more to it, but that is Pokemon in a nutshell, uh, or a Pokeball, if you will. Uh, let's take a look in the parts and features of this pen. Uh, the top of the cap is rounded. Uh, this transitions into the clip. Uh, this is a traditional pilot clip with the ball on the end. It's stamped with pilot at the top. And at the very top, it has the serial number of this pen. Uh, this is a limited edition of 100 units per Pokemon, so 300 units in total. Um, I will also say, to the best of what I can see, that serial number really looks stamped rather than engraved. Uh, I know it's a small thing, but stamping typically looks so much nicer than engraving. So it's a nice touch in a leading indicator as to the overall quality of craftsmanship of this pen. Pilot typically doesn't disappoint. The cap angles up, and at the end we have a wide band. On it, it is stamped with sterling silver and Japan. There is no sterling silver hallmark from what I could see on this pen. Uh, most European countries require a hallmark for sterling silver, but in the US it's not required. Uh, I'm assuming that's the case for Japan as well, since that's where this pen was manufactured. There is a small step down from the cap to the barrel, which tapers down and the end, like the top of the cap, is rounded. Okay, let's take a look at the themed artwork here on this pen. 
On the cap, there is a Pokeball. Uh, these are used for capturing Pokemon out in the wild. Then on the barrel, we have Charizard. Now, Charizard is one of the most popular Pokemon, I think for a couple of reasons. Um, he is obtained very early in the game, so you have him for a while. Um, also, he kind of looks like a cross between a dinosaur and a dragon, but he's actually not a dragon when it comes to Pokemon classification. Uh, he is categorized as a fire and flying type. It's a character folks have a lot of nostalgia about. Uh, there is also a Charizard trading card, which is the most valuable Pokemon card. Uh, at an auction in 2022, one sold for $420,000. On the site that sells these pens, uh, they describe this pattern as hand-etched. Uh, I'm not quite sure that's accurate. Uh, it might be a translation issue. Uh, the image is embossed, so it's not etched into the material. And to the best of my eye, the black outlines don't look to be hand-applied to me either. This isn't a big issue, just a mild marketing misrepresentation by either Pilot or the site selling these pens. The cap snaps off, and underneath we have a neat looking inlaid 18 karat gold rhodium plated nib. I think this nib looks really sharp. Now, the site that sells these pens doesn't give you a nib option, so it's a bit of a mystery as to what you will receive. Um, it's uncertain whether they are all mediums or if there's other tipping available as well. Um, since there is no external marking on the box or packaging, I'm kind of thinking they all might be mediums. Um, something I really like about Pilot Nibs is that they date them. Uh, there is that one to one at the base of the nib, which means that this nib was manufactured in January of 2021. Um, I think that's a neat way to date your Pilot pen. And here's a look at the underside of the section. I hesitate to call it a feed, at least one in the traditional sense. Uh, the feed and the section are all one seamless piece. The section is plastic, it angles up and there's a small step up to the remainder of the barrel. Um, I find this angled section to be comfortable in the hand. Um, I do like that the nib has these little notches on the side because naturally that's where I grip a pen. If the nib was designed differently, it might have made the section less comfortable for me personally. Uh, the pen is plenty long enough for me to use unposted. The cap posts very deeply. Um, it's secure, and even though it's made from silver, I don't find the cap to backweight the pen or throw off the balance at all. Though, since it does post so deep, you will need to pay attention to the cap orientation when doing so. Um, if it's not aligned with the nib, the, this clip will rub up against your hand uh, when you're using it. Now, it's smooth, so it's not uncomfortable, just more of an annoyance. So it's something you'll want to be conscious of when posting. Um, I'm uncertain over time if continual posting will cause some micro scratches in the silver. Just not quite certain about that. This is a cartridge converter pen. Um, Pilot does have a proprietary system, so you'll need to either use Pilot branded cartridges or the included Con40 converter. Um, I will say the Con40 converter is not my favorite. Uh, the ink capacity is on the low side, and it has these three metal balls, which are used to break up the surface tension of the ink in order to facilitate better ink flow. Uh, while that's nice, I'm not fond of the rattling noise it makes. Now, right now, the pen is not inked, so the noise is significant. Um, during the writing sample, I'll demonstrate what it sounds like once it's inked up. The Pilot Pokemon is only available on the Pokemon Center website and it retails for $599. A standard Pilot Silver retails for $544, so that's not too bad of a markup considering the licensing costs involved. Uh, yes, that is a considerable amount of money, uh, but if there is a crossover between a fountain pen and a Pokemon in the Venn diagram of your interests, uh, then this pen might be for you. Um, while Pokemon is loved by people of all ages, it is mainly geared toward uh, folks like the 5 to 12 year old market. Um, it would be nice to also see the licensing used by Pilot on more of an entry level pen or one that would be more attractively priced for someone who is uh, just getting into the hobby. If you're just starting off with this hobby, your first pen, no matter how much you like Pokemon, probably isn't going to be one priced at about $600. Okay. Thanks go out to Jens for the loan of this pen. Now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample.
Okay, here we have some size comparisons for the Pilot Pokemon. Wanted to give you another look at the Pokeball that is there, as well as the Charizard. It's kind of hard to get uh, a good look at him just because he rotates around the entire uh, thing, kind of wraps around, but it's really nice art, nice art and uh, it's done very well. In regard to some size comparisons for a couple of other Pilot pens, here's what it looks like with a Custom Heritage 92. And then here it is with an 823. Uh, and then here it is with a Pilot Vanishing Point. In regard to a couple of non-Pilot pens, here it is with a Pelican M800. A Sailor King of Pen. This is the uh, uh, Pro Gear in the Sky. And then finally here it is with a Montblanc 146. In regard to uncapped comparisons, here it is with the Montblanc 146 and the Pilot 823 and the Pelican M805. I think I said 800 earlier. This is actually an 805. Here we go with the writing sample for the Pilot Pokemon. Uh, this is a medium 18 karat gold nib, uh, and the ink I'm using is one of my favorites. And since we're reviewing a Pilot pen, I thought I'd use one of my favorite Pilot inks, which is Pilot Irosazuku. And this is Yamabudo. Yamabuto is just a really nice deep purple. I just find that it really looks well coming out of a lot of different pens. Um, this is what it looks like in comparison to uh, Califolio's Antinopal, uh, as well as Private Reserve's Plum. This is what the bottle looks like. Um, as you can see, this bottle is almost used. This is probably going to be the next bottle of ink I go through. I'm very, very close uh, to being done with this bottle of Yamabudo. Plus, these bottles are just the coolest. I think this is one of my favorite uh, ink bottles out there. It just looks really nice. I love this teardrop at the bottom. It's just nice and solid, stands up nice, really deep. You can get anything in there. This is just a great design for an ink bottle. And here we go with the rest of the writing sample. Uh, this medium nib is outstanding. Uh, you can get a little bit of line variation out of here. Uh, if you start pushing it a bit, you can see there's a bit here. Um, the ink flow is very generous for this medium nib. Uh, in regard to reverse writing, it is a little scratchy, but it gets the job done. Uh, but it is very smooth, and uh, this is one of those nibs that I started writing with, and I'm like, ooh, this is nice. There's always that nice feeling when you start writing with it, and you just know immediately that it's just a really high-quality nib. Uh, and that's what I feel about this nib. In regard to some fast writing... The feed has no issue in keeping up at all. So there we have the Pilot Pokemon, the Charizard to be more specific. Um, thanks again. Go out to Jens for the loan of this pen. It'll be heading your way soon. Uh, and until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.